A radical equation is an equation in which our variable that we're trying to solve for is involved within the radicand of your radical expression. Here, I'm trying to solve for x, and my is equal to sign is right there. So, I notice that on the left-hand side, I have my radical, the um, square root of 14 minus x, and then after the radical stops, plus 2, and is equal to x. Now, the first step in solving our radical equations is to isolate the radical, get the radical expression on a side by itself. So, since this is my radical expression, I want to subtract 2 from both sides so that we get the square root of that 14 minus x on a side by itself. So when we subtract 2 from both sides, we'll get the square root of 14 minus x is equal to x minus 2. Now we have the square root taking the entire left-hand side so that we can undo the square root by raising both sides to the power that matches the index. Now you can only raise to a power to get rid of the radical if you have an equation and you can do the process to both sides. It won't give you an equivalent expression if you just do a, the squaring process to a radical expression. But here we do have an equation, so we have a left side and a right side. We will raise both sides to the second power. On the left hand side, the square root of 14 minus x quantity squared, the square undoes the square root, and we are left with 14 minus x. Now on the right side, you have to be careful. We have a two-term expression that's being raised to the second power. Now remember, if you take a two-term expression that's raised to a power, you have to take that two-term base and write as many of them as you have for the power, for how many factors you need, and then FOIL it out. So here we need x minus 2 times x minus 2, because we have our x minus 2 squared, and we have to FOIL it. So that'll give us x squared minus 2x minus 2x, and then plus 4. So simplifying that, we get x squared minus 4x plus 4. And that's our right-hand side, removing our parentheses. Okay, at this stage of the game, our radical has been removed, and we want to solve this resulting equation. Now we notice when we look at the exponents on the x, the highest degree term has a square on the x, so it's quadratic. Quadratic equations we can solve by factoring, completing the square, or the quadratic formula. Let's go ahead and try to solve this by factoring. Now to try to solve it by factoring, the very first step is to get all the terms on one side and zero on the other side. Since I already have three terms on the right hand side and my coefficient in front of my square term over there is positive, let's go ahead and subtract our 14 from both sides and add our x to both sides. Now that will give us zero on the left hand side. And then on the right hand side, combining like terms, we get x squared minus 3x, and then minus 10. Now, we want to see if we can factor x squared minus 3x minus 10. So we'll bring down the 0 is equal to, we'll set up our two binomials. In our first terms of our binomials, we need an x so that we get x times x, which would be the same thing as x squared. And then we want the factors of negative 10 that would add to get negative 3. So the numbers who multiply together and give me negative 10, but also add together and give me negative 3, are negative 5 and positive 2. Now, when we have a multiplication of two quantities that come out to be a product of 0, we know that one of the factors has to be 0. So either the x minus 5 has to be 0, or the x plus 2 has to be 0 in order for their product to come out 0. This allows us to solve the resulting linear equations. For this first one, we will add 5 to both sides to get x is equal to 5. And for the next one, we'll subtract 2 from both sides to get x is equal to negative 2. 
Those, so these are our possible solutions. But remember, we can't quit there. We have to check our solutions whenever we raise both sides of an equation to an even power when we were solving it. So let's first check x equal 5. So we're going to go to the original equation, and anywhere there's an x, we're going to take it out and put 5 in instead. So we have the square root of 14 minus 5, and then after the end of the square root, we've got a plus 2. And we want to know if that'll come out the same as, again, taking out the x and replacing it with what we're checking, 5. Now we don't want to go through the solving process to check this. We've got numbers everywhere. So we want to follow our order of operations to simplify each of these sides and then see if they come out to be the same. On the left side of the equal sign, underneath the radical, we have 14 minus 5, which is 9. So we have the square root of 9 plus 2. We want to know if that will come out to be 5. Square root of 9 is 3. So 3 plus 2, is that the same as 5? Well, yes, 5 is the same as 5. So x equal 5 is a solution to our original equation. But we also need to check the other possible solution, our x equal negative 2. So again, we're going to go back to the original equation, this time take out the x's and put negative 2 in instead. So we have the square root of 14 minus our negative 2, and then after that, plus 2. Does that come out to be the same as take out the x and put in negative 2. Well, simplifying this again, we have under the square root 14 minus a negative 2. So that's 14 plus 2. We have the square root of 16 plus 2. Does that come out to be negative 2? Well, the square root of 16 is 4, and 4 plus 2 on the left side, we want to know if that comes out to be a negative 2 like the right side. 4 plus 2 is 6. And 6 is not the same as negative 2, so that did not work, so that's enough. So x equal negative 2 is not a solution. We can't report it as an answer to the equation. Sometimes instructors may want you to say that negative 2, the solution that was a possible solution but didn't check, is extraneous. So we got it as a possible solution by doing valid steps, but it doesn't satisfy the original equation. Our solution, the only solution to this original equation is x equals 5.